And how is everyone doing today on this July 26th, this Wednesday, this night eight of the G1 Climax 33? How are you doing? Because hopefully you're doing well and you're excited to hear some talk about today's show because I am going to recap it right here. This is the daily G1 Climax 33 recap and review show here on youtube.com slash Mr. Warren Hayes or on your favorite podcast app. Audio, video, available everywhere. So you know the deal. Likes, subscribes, uh, 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 reviews, ratings, all that good stuff. But there's a lot to talk about today. Today was the second night, the last night in Corken Hall. The uh, the second night out of three in Tokyo. And I told y'all yesterday, uh, don't forget, or keep you, not don't forget, but stay alert because these Tokyo shows are going to leave us with some surprises. They're going to leave us with some some little bits where you're going to be like, oh, no, isn't that interesting? Isn't that just a little monkey wrench in my predictions kind of thing? This was the night. This was one of them anyway. Uh, we're not done with Tokyo yet. We still have Oda City Gym uh, tomorrow. But uh, but yeah, a, a bit of a surprise one tonight and I'm excited to talk about it. And uh, just before we go any deeper, a little programming note. Uh, tomorrow... July 27, I will not be doing the G1 recap on the same day. I will be doing it on Friday on July 28. Full transparency. I have a, a, a day where I can uh, spend outside, believe it or not. I can spend it with uh, with my fa- the, uh, with my with my family and I'm going to take advantage of that. I had a good opportunity show up, so we're going to take advantage of that, but don't fret. I'll be back on Friday to do it. So we're just we're just delaying a day. And we we've got a couple of days between the next uh, G1 event, so I don't think you'll be, you know, you'll be chomping at the uh, at the bit to absolutely get my thoughts tomorrow, and then check this out, like something tremendous is going to happen tomorrow, and then you will you will be like Warren, I don't know. but I'll be back on Friday uh, with uh, with uh, the uh, recap of Night Nine, uh, so don't you worry, everything is still under control. We're just taking a bit of a a bit of an opportunity for a quick. Uh, so, some quick time with the family. So let's get to it. Uh, start with the results from C Block uh, on night seven, uh, night eight, excuse me, of the G1, July 26. Evil defeated Henare. Shingo Takagi defeated Mikey Nichols. Tomohiro Ishii defeated Eddie Kingston. Tama Tonga defeated David Finley. And on the D Block side, we have Alex Coughlin defeated Hiroki Goto. We have uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi defeating Toriyano. Sh- Shane Haste defeating Tetsuya Naito. And Jeff Cobb in the main event beating Zack Sabre Jr. Let's talk about the matches. We'll start with C Block, of course. They actually opened up the evening. Evil versus Hinare. Um, You know what? I didn't hate this. I, I, th- I think so far this is probably my favorite evil match because there was actual wrestling here <laughs> there was there were actually beating each other up and uh and i can appreciate that that's something i can get behind and uh thank you evil thank you uh um aaron, uh, aaron. <laughs> we'll never forget aaron uh but thank you both for this i mean you know it, we, we weren't um expunged from any house of torture nonsense here uh, you know, Dick Togo attacked Hinari during his introduction. He blindsided him, and uh, and then he got sh- strangled with the garrote in the ring. Um, you know, and and the whole first part uh, of uh, of these proceedings were happening in the audience. You know, they were fighting into it. Uh, you know, uh, that and then they went back to the ring. They went back into the audience. And, you know, once we're in the ring, I thought the, you know, I thought it wasn't so bad as, you know, the big lads are landing power moves on each other. It's the kind of thing you'd expect uh, when you see two big guys like that. And Hinare thwarts a Dick Togo chair shot, punches right through it and a pretty fun visual. Um, But the referee uh, sees the chair in uh, Hinari's hand because he was given the, uh, he was left holding the, uh, the remnants of the chair, like the, you know, the, the the actual structure of it. Uh, so the referee is distracted by that, which allows Evil to hit the low blow. Everything is evil. He gets another six points. Um, 
of course, I hate the ending, but I didn't think this was so bad. I don't think this was the most egregious example of House of Torture nonsense. I actually thought this was pretty fun for what it was. Um, Hanari got his shots in. Evil reminded us that he can still he can still do it if he feels like it. That's the thing. If you know, if he's up to it, he can still do it. But uh, you know, very low on the shtick. And um, you know, cheers to that. I have to raise a glass of water. But still, Jingo Takagi defeated uh, Mikey Nichols. Uh, I you know, again, this is a match that when I was previewing today, yesterday, when I was doing my preview yesterday of today, <laughs> if you prefer, uh, I was like, look, a couple of months ago, you would have told me Shingo Takagi versus Mikey Nichols, and I was like, Pfft. but the tournament that Mikey Nichols has been having so far has been really exciting. I think he's been a, I think he's been a great, uh, uh, a great addition, turns out. He's been having strong, rugged, snug matches, and Therefore, I was excited to see what he was going to do with Shingo Tagagi, and, and I thought this was very good. Fun start, and after a bit of, of a control segment by Mikey Nichols, Shingo starts stringing a bunch of power moves and strikes. Uh, Mikey Nichols lands a beautiful superplex where Shingo literally just bounces off the mat. That was great. You get a DVD and a sliding lariat by Mikey Nichols, and a great back and forth between the guys who start kicking out at one after their shots. Nichols' head is split open again. And we get a bit of a weird finish where Nichols is whipped into the ropes and Shingo runs into the ropes as well and they just sort of collide into each other and Shingo falls on top. It, like, you know, kind of looked like they were trying to do a Spanish fly, although <clears throat> I don't know what kind of, you know, if, if, if that's actually something, but they, you know, they run into each other and Shingo just falls on top and the referee counts the three. You know, an odd finish, which you sort of hope that, you know, Nichols isn't legitimately hurt kind of thing. But I thought this match was very good. I thought this was a lot of fun. They were laying in hard to each other, just a good fight. Mikey Nichols continues to have a... A surprisingly great G1 as far as, like, his score might not re re reflect it, but his performance absolutely does. But the finish was odd. Hopefully it's not anything really serious. Like I said, you know, Nichols' head got busted open, re-aggravating an injury for a couple of nights ago, so he's got a few days off, right? The next time that uh, Nichols will be uh, wrestling is going to be on the 30th. So he's got uh, he's got like uh, four days to rest, recoup. Hopefully everything's okay. But I really like this, and Shingo gets uh, two points. I really, really, really like this match. And then Tomohiro Ishii versus City Kingston happened. Where where you know let's call this one a surprise. Ishii got his first two points, but I say a surprise. Like I, it's surprising because Ishii has been you know a big non-factor so far. And I know, like, at some point, you drop at two points, right? And Eddie Kingston is a guest, you know, from you know a sister promotion, a, a partner promotion. You kind of think, you know, it's like, well, they're going to take good care of him. So on that front, you know, maybe it's a little surprising. But I think it's not surprising in the degree that I can absolutely, absolutely get behind a theory that Eddie Kingston would just walk up to, to Gato, whoever's booking, and putting the matches together and said, no, look, I want, I want to lose to Ishii. Like, no, you know, I want to put the guy over. I can absolutely see that. I can ab absolutely see Eddie doing that. I'm going to put Ishii over in Cork and I don't care. That's fine. And I love this match. I thought this was a great match. I thought this was fabulous. Fabulous is not a word you use very often when it comes to wrestling criticism, but here we are in the war, in the uh, in the land of uh, 2023. We get gourd busters early on and stomps, and and the boys they just lay into each other. This you know this is meant to be you know the a King's Road struggle match. Well you know that's probably what Eddie wanted, and that's what Eddie got. And Tomohiro Ishii was the guy to deliver this. 
uh, and they're just dropping each other on their heads with with Germans and Saito suplexes. Uh, you know, Eddie Kingston decapitates at some point Ishii with a lariat, backdrop driver, and a stretch plum. And Ishii, does, he does a charging, diving headbutt. Like, he's running the ropes and he dies straight head first into Kingston with a headbutt. Yeah, just insane shit. They keep throwing bombs at each other. Full of fighting spirit, these guys are. And he lands two back fists. Ishii does a code breaker. Uh, kind of out of nowhere. And lands the brain buster for the clean as a sheet uh, victory. Hard hitting. A fight. A good final stretch. I, you know, sometimes I don't, I don't ask for much out of, out of my pro wrestling. Sometimes I just want to see two dudes, two big old dudes. Just kicking the shit out of each other and making me believe that, you know, that's what they love. That's what they want to, you know, they want to get hit harder. And, yeah, honestly, I think this is, well, I believe this is Eddie's best match of the tournament. It was my match of the night. I love this match. Thought it was great. Now... I think this will be Eddie's match of the tournament. <laughs> you know, I've said it, you know, I, I, I've said it, you know, a couple of times. Uh, I I don't think it's going to get more heated, more alive for Eddie Kingston than this match here. And I'm glad it delivered. This was great. I loved it. And then the final match for Block C we're going to talk about is David Finley versus Tamatanga. And this match over delivered. Uh, just simply put... You know, I think everyone was coming in this with a little bit of apprehension. A little bit, oh, what's going to happen here? Well, this match over-delivered. Just great stuff. And, you know, just some visceral dislike. Some good old-fashioned, you know, history feuds popping up here. You know, Tamatanga, he's, you know, he's like, he, he knows the score. And he goes after David Finley, you know, during introductions. They go into the audience. Tamatanga gets the upper hand. David Finley throws him off the rafters, though, and he lands on his knee, and this would be the story of the match where Tamatanga's knee would be uh, would, would be the target for Finley's offense. So he works it for the entire match. Tonga tries to fight back, lands a stinger splash. Uh, David Finley lands an Irish curse back, backbreaker. SRC by Tamatanga goes for the uh, supreme flow, but David Finley gets his knees up. So what does David Finley do? He goes for a sharpshooter. Tamatanga gets a head of steam. He dumps David Finley to the floor, lands a Pescado, gets him back in the ring, then connects with the Supreme Flow. We're in and out of moves. Finley lands the Blue Thunderbomb, the Dominator, but Tamatanga can't be kept down. Huge strikes by David Finley. Like, he is just laying into him. Lands a spear, picks him up. Tamatanga rolls through with a sunset flip, and he gets a bit of a surprise win. Tremendous match. Great work, exciting as it should feel when you're challenging one of the one of the block leaders who is no longer a single block leader. And Tamatanga knew at the same time this was a big deal. Like if he wanted to stay in the conversation to move it on to the playoffs, he had to win this match. Well, he wrestled like he had to. Like all this was great G1 storytelling. Bit of a shock win. I don't think anyone was expecting this. But you know what? It's making the block even more interesting. After the match, uh, Gato and Finley beat up on Tama. And uh, that's probably going to be something that is going to carry over into the rest of his tournament. You know, these things don't happen randomly. Uh, you know, the knee and then the beat down. Uh, this is probably something that over the next, uh, the last three matches that Tama Tonga is going to have is going to be a factor. So as it stands for block C, David Finley, Evil, and Tama Tonga are all at the top with six points. This is definitely a scenario that David Finley did not want. Eddie Kingston, Shingo, Takagi are tied at four. And Mikey Nichols, Hinare, and Tomohiro Ishii are rounding out the bottom at 
Two, that does it for C block. Moving on to D block now, we've got uh, Alex Coughlin defeated Hiroki Goto. This was very short, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, six minutes, 23 seconds recorded by Cage Match. Uh, they are playing up the fact that uh, uh, Hiroki Goto's ribs are injured. Still not entirely sure how much of a shoot or a work it is. But, uh, you know, Coughlin, uh, Coughlin just beat him down. Go to string some offense together here, but uh, his ribs are keeping him from doing proper follow throughs. So Jackhammer finishes uh, finishes it all up for Alex Coughlin. Fine little match. No nonsense. Well executed. But, you know, nothing much to it. Just a fine little match. And Hiro Hiroshi Tanahashi defeated Toriano. You know what? This was actually... I was surprised here because this was actually more of a wrestling match than anything shenanigan related to Yano. And I would have believed that they would have continued to really smoke and mirror uh, Tanahashi's uh, issues right now. But they decided to actually wrestle more than do the silly shit and, um, I mean, not that there's not, there's stuff with tape, there's the turnbuckles and whatnot, but there's a lot more stuff here. You know, there's this, you know, the, there's this moment, quite unfortunate, where there's a, a spear by Toriano to the back of Hiroshi Tanahashi, and Tana really weakly bumps into the ref, and look, High Fly Flow puts it away, but, um, Look, uh, I think this is this was uh, uh, this was a match that exposed Tanahashi even more than anything previous he's done on any other night of the G1 because he had to work this match, he had to carry this match in the wrestling arena because in the wrestling department because Yano just can't Yano. That's not what he does. So Tanahashi had to do a lot of the heavy lifting here. And it showed. <laughs> it, it it just showed that he was a little out of his element here. And maybe this was not the greatest uh, Tanahashi performance. And I think I we're seeing cracks in the veneer here. We really are. Shane Hayes defeated Tetsuya Naito. You want to talk about shockers and surprises. Holy smokes. Naito gets a proper upper hand when it spills to the floor and then they, they, you know, he starts working Shane Haste's neck, gets a big old cravat spot in there, get a reverse power slam by Shane Haste and a falcon arrow, forearms to the neck by Naito, and then Speranza and a back suplex um, by, by Tetsuya Naito and then a back suplex by Shane, Shane Haste and both men are down at the 10 minute mark. Swing DDT by Naito that spikes Shane Haste. Haste avoids a Destino and lariats Naito down. The fast Destino connects. Of course, Shane Haste kicks out. Yano, uh, not Yano, but Naito goes for the proper Destino, but Shane Haste reverses out of it and into the Bomb Valley Death to get the upset surprise shock win here. We've got another two points for Shane Haste. This was unexpected. Completely unexpected, solid match by the book, good story, well done. Naito smooth as hell, no, no issues. I had no issues at all, and just adding a a, a little extra, a little extra uh, taste here, a little extra spice into Block D, as we're keeping everyone really close to each other in the points, and a great performance by Haste as well. I really like this match. I thought it was a great match. Lots of good stuff on tonight's card. I thought this was a very good show. And then finally in the main event, not only of Block D, but of the night, Jeff Cobb defeated Zack Sabre Jr. This is their third, like in recent months, this is their third uh, uh, um, match together in the two previous attempts which were for the TV title. Cobb could not put um, uh, Zack Sabre Jr. away, but he came prepared here. He, uh, you know, because his game plan was essentially to create some distance and not allow Zack to get into the ground game. 
you'll you know it, you'll notice that in this match here, Zach was not doing you know the grappling. He wasn't doing the, the you know the 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 hot reversals and the you know the arm twisties and the leg bendies. He was not doing any of that. He was completely thrown off his game because Cobb was just doing what he does best and that was being a powerhouse. Not only that, a powerhouse with a tribute spot to John Cena. You don't see those every day. Cobb break, uh, beats up Zack Sabre Jr. on the floor. Tornado DDT gets uh, Zack Sabre Jr. back into this match where he had been eating shit so far. And Cobb is quick to get out of the uh, the submissions. He, he you know he reaches the ropes whenever he gets like an, an armbar attempt, and he's just squirreling for the ropes as quickly as possible. Cobb reverses out of a guillotine into a suplex. He's been very successful, like I said, keeping Zack Saber Jr. away from his ground game. There's a bit of a whiff when he tries to do a when he tries to yank uh, Zack Saber Jr. into a spin cycle. Doesn't quite work out, but he collects himself and tries it again. Goes for the tour of the islands. Zack Saber Jr. reverses out of it, and Cobb has to get to the ropes fast once to the ropes has to get to the ropes fast once again. Cobb pushes out of the European clutch at the 15 at the 15 minute mark. Cobb flings Zack Saber Jr. off his shoulders toward the islands. Gets the win. Good fight. I thought this was another great. I thought it was another great one. I thought it was really good. Fantastic main event, and the Corkin crowd was super into it too. They were very into it. So now we have dominant Jeff Cobb in this tournament, not middling around, you know, with four to with four points. No, no, no. He's got the perfect record. There's only two other people in this tournament who have a perfect record. That is the world champion Sonata and Kazuchika Okada. So he's in exclusive company, hanging out here in Block D. And he's absolutely establishing himself as a player so far. So the standings right now, Jeff Cobb's at eight. Zack Sabre Jr. at six. Hiroki Goto, Tetsuya Naito, Shane Haste, Hiroshi Tanahashi. That's four guys. Four of them, all at, uh, at four points. Alex Coughlin at two. He scored his first two. And Toriano at zero. Now... The, the significance of Jeff Cobb versus Zack Sabre Jr. Is, cannot be set aside here because right now, these were the two block leaders and now Jeff Cobb has the tie-breaking win over his closest competition. So that is significant and can be a, that will probably be a tremendous detriment for Zack moving forward that really... You know, gets rid of his chances here, especially if, let's say, a guy like Tetsuya Naito decides to mount a comeback, which is still possible. I kind of feel like Block D is going to be a battle for the second place right now. Because if you look at, let me pull this up here. If you take a look at, um, if you take a look at uh, at what's left for for Cobb. Uh, the worst is kind of behind him. And don't forget, he also has a win over Tetsuya Naito. So, very much, all signs point to Jeff Cobb making it to the playoffs uh, as the winner of, uh, as the, uh, as the winner of uh, B Block here. The D Block. Why did I say B Block? So, you see Cobb right now, he has his win over Tetsuya Naito. He's defeated Alex Coughlin, who will not be an, an issue. He's defeated Tanahashi, who again, well, well, he will probably not be an issue. Uh, and he just got the big win over Zack Sabre Jr. So honestly, right now, he has went, gone through the toughest part of this block. He's got Yano left, he's got Goto left, and he's got Shane Haste left. Now, Shay, and he's fighting Shane Haste on the final night of Block D on August 9th. Now, is that significant? I couldn't tell you. Like, here's the thing. Yano can still spoil, can still spoil anyone's tournament. That's still where we're at. He can still sneak in a win and uh and get you know and get his two. So that's something that can happen. And Jeff Cobb, it's in his personality, in his persona to get a little overconfident and maybe 
you know, have one sneak by him. Uh, right now, Goto, with how they're doing the rib story, the story of the ribs, uh, this might actually work to Cobb's advantage, so I can see him getting a win there. And is Shane Hayes going to become like the underdog big win guy here? So I don't know if it's, like, it looks like a clear path. It looks like a clear path to a perfect G1 for Jeff Cobb. But you never know. You never know. And as for Naito, if Naito wanted to mount his comeback, because, you know, that's still something that's in discussions. That's still something that people want to talk about. Well, Naito has lost to the block leader, right? So if anything, I think he's racing to make it to number two. He's defeated Goto. He's defeated Yano, but he just lost to Shane Hayes. He's got Coughlin, Zack Sabre Jr., and Tanahashi left, so he still has two big, uh, uh, big opponents left to to handle, and he's fighting Tanahashi on the final night. So something tells me that Tanahashi might be in this mix, and that Zack Saber Jr. might start seeing his uh, his G1 dreams slip away. That's what I'm figuring right now. Keep an eye on all of this, but in big news. We have our first official mathematically eliminated wrestler of the G1. This is not a soft elimination. This is a hard elimination. Toriano with Jeff Cobb winning, uh, winning his, uh, his, uh, his match tonight and being up at eight points. Toriano is mathematically out of the race. He cannot catch up and he also holds uh and uh you know Zack Sabre you know, well Warren what if he makes it to six points well Zack Sabre Jr. holds the tiebreaker Hiroshi Tanahashi holds the tiebreaker over him like he hasn't won a single match yet so I think you know so officially Toriano is out of the tournament am I soft eliminating anyone today well yes I am uh I'm soft eliminating Tomohiro Ishii despite his win today uh He's, uh, look, he's, and that's mostly due to um, Tamatanga becoming a, a block leader in C block uh, because he's lost to Finley and to Tom and to Tamatanga. So both guys hold the tiebreaker over him and that's not good. He still has his match with Evil to, coming up. He might pull one off there, um, but uh, even if he does, it's plausible. Like, look, it's plausible for him to win his next three matches, which would bring him up to eight points, him being Ishii, of course. Um, but that would mean that the only way for him to ensure a victory or even moving on to, uh, uh, or even at the very least moving on to, as uh, moving into the final, uh, the playoffs as, um, as the runner-up, that means that the block leaders would have to lose their next two matches. And I don't think that's happening. So quite unfortunately, we got to put we got to put our boy Ishii into the soft eliminated category here. Um, even though that, even though mathematically it's still possible, I think that realistically it's not. How about some recommendations? How about some recommendations? <laughs> let, let me put, let, let me give you a couple of, look, I thought this was a pretty good show. I, I, I really thought that this was, one of the better top to bottom shows. Maybe it didn't. It, it lacked the glitz and glamour of a uh, of a Taichi versus Okada or a Hanare versus Takagi. But uh, solid matches. You know, my match of the night is Tomohiro Ishii versus Eddie Kingston. I think you should go out of your way to watch it. I think it was very good. Tama Tonga versus David Finley. Zack Sabre Jr. versus Jeff Cobb. But honestly, if you wanted to sit down and watch the entirety of it. I think it's fine, and it's one of the shorter ones as well. I think it clocked in at about two two hours and fifteen minutes, something to that effect. Two fifteen, two twenty. So not even one of the longer uh, block uh, block matches, uh, block shows so far. So those would be my recommendations uh, for uh, for the tournament. For not for the tournament, but for the uh, the G one. Uh, the, the, the uh, G1 action for July 26, C and D block. 
what is happening tomorrow. What is happening tomorrow? I got a, if I pull up the schedule properly, that'll work. There we go. Oda City Gym in Tokyo, July 27. We're back with A and B block. Shota Umino versus Chase Owens. I think Shota has this one in the bag. Kaito Kiyomiya versus Gabe Kidd. I also think Kaito Kiyomiya has this one in the bag. Hikaleo versus Yoda Suji. Yeah. You, you got to put the proper big guy over here, don't you? Hey, you you, you kind of do. And then, uh, and then Sonata versus Ren Narita. This is going to be a very interesting one. This is going to be a very, very interesting one. Like if, you know, Narita is the one who was underperforming regarding the, in regards to the other three of the uh, Musketeers. If he were, look, I, you know, I mentioned it two nights ago and I'll, uh, and I'll say it again here. There, there is an argument to be made that, you know, Narita could, even though his, you know, his G1 has been a little lackluster, if he beats the world champion, that would be a big deal because none of the other, um, none of the other uh, 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 musketeers have, right? Let me just take a look real quick here. Yeah, Umino lost, Suji lost, and they're doing better in the points, but what if Narita is the guy who beats the world champion? That would be a big feather in his cap. That would be something different. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't be against it. I think it would make sense in whatever stories that they're telling here. Uh, plus, would also add this concept, this idea that Ren Narita then deserves a world championship shot and they can have a title defense for Sonata on the way to uh, on the way to uh, uh, Wrestle Kingdom, like at uh, King of Pro Wrestling or Destruction, whatever the hell they're calling it this year, um, at the one big show um, later on this fall. Like that makes that that would make sense, and it's a nice little simple defense that Sonata can can have, and it'll work out, and then he can move on to the Tokyo Dome. Even though I still think it's weird to have him go to the Tokyo Dome, uh, but that's a whole other story. Um, so yeah, so uh, 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 so you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Ren Narita picks up the big win, the big upset victory. Like I said, the Tokyo shows they're meant to give us. They're meant to give us a little, a little shot in the arm, a little jolt in our back. Are you paying attention, folks? Kind of thing. Block B, got Yoshihashi versus Tai Chi. Low key, excited for that one. Uh, Tangaloa versus Great Okan. That's a match that's going to happen. El Fantasmo versus Kenta. Ugh. Ugh. And the main event, Kazuchika Okada versus Will Ospreay, which of course has block leading uh, 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 implications. Right, because right now uh, Okada leads the block uh, uh, with eight points, but Will Osprey is right there behind him, uh, nipping at his heels. So, if um, can even pull it up here, right here, if we want, block B would be actually more relevant. There we go, right there at six points. So that means that if Osprey wins, he ties with Okada at eight plus. Has the uh, has the um, uh, the uh, the tiebreaker win over Okada, which is going to be a huge deal. Um, will Osprey make it to the finals? Then, if look, uh, if Osprey loses tomorrow, he's not making it to the playoffs. And I think we'll add a little more fire to the speculation that he is indeed leaving New Japan and heading to AEW. Because look, why would New Japan? push a guy who will be leaving the company in a couple of months if that if that is the case so if Okada wins I think it I think it it, it guarantees that Will is not making it to the playoffs or at the very least not winning the G1 how about that because you know mathematically there still might be possibilities but at the very least Will Ospreay if he loses tomorrow is not lo is not winning the G1 and is likely officially really, really done with New Japan. I think it'll just be a question of time before he shows up officially as an all-elite wrestling guy. Um, he might even want to get himself eliminated so he can, 
you know, rest his body for maybe there's something in the works for all in. Who knows at this point? I couldn't tell you. I really don't know what's going on. But it's all good speculation. But the more things are, the more you think about things, the more you realize just how much Kazuchika Okada is running away with the blog and that the uh, the runner-up spot is still very much open. We're going to see how it all turns out tomorrow. But as I said previously in the show, I will be providing you with my recap and review on Friday. I will not be here tomorrow, but Friday I'll be back to break down everything just, just like as if nothing happened. How about that? Uh, in the meantime, um, in, in the meantime, look, you, I, even though I will not be here for the G1 recap, you will get my Dynamite review if you're into that. I do those every Thursday and that's what's going to be happening. So Thursday, tomorrow, uh, my, my typical Dynamite review. Otherwise, be back for more G1 stuff, uh, collision stuff. Whenever you decide to come back and say hello, I'll be here. I'll see you next time.